Hello everybody and today I am back and the game that I'm gonna show you was played yesterday by Magnus at the World Cup against Pantsulai Levan and as I think it was a very very brilliant game so let's go so Magnus started off with c4 uh, English opening c5 Knight of 3, g6. His opponent likes going for some Benoni-ish stuff because I saw in the first round of the World Cup he went for some Benoni like c5, g6. So this was a huge surprise. Knight of 3, g6. Magnus played d4, gaining space. d5, also a very nice move. Uh, d6, e4. So it is looking somewhat like Benoni. e6, h3. 97. I mean, so far both sides were developing, right? Magnus plays knight c3. Computer already says that Magnus has plus one position, but as a human, I don't really think it is plus one because, in my opinion, like the plus one is just because of this, right? The pawn on d5, which gains more space, so white has more space. Uh, but it doesn't really feel as you have an extra pawn, right? Sure, extra space is nice, but I don't think it's that great. I mean, sure, of course it's great, but I don't think it's plus one. I would give it about 0 0.5 to white. His open played h6, and Magnus played d takes e. Uh, Stoffer says that it's an inaccuracy, uh, that Magnus just had to play bishop d3, and then like bishop d2, queen c2, just develop, castle, and then like this position, right? It is plus one, but d takes e ninety five. Sure, here you actually win a pawn, but for example, uh, for example, in my opinion, black can just get like e five. So yeah, these types of positions, white are just plus one because uh, plus two even because they can put the knight on g three and e three. And then they are going to jump to these very important squares. So it is plus one, but I think Magnus took a very practical... Uh, uh, Magnus played a very practical move, d takes e. The idea is simply to create a weakness on d6, oops, on d6, right? Wait, what? All right, yeah. On d6, so maybe his idea is bishop d4, and then like take it right with the queen and with the bishop. So in my opinion, it is a very practical idea. D takes e, even though Stockfish says it's an inaccuracy. His opponent took Magnus played bishop before, continuing his idea. Ninety six. So black sacrifices the pawn. Uh, but the thing is, is that oh, why they are fine with sacrificing a pawn like that? Is that because they get a very good compensation? So queen e5, Magnus has to waste the tempo queen d2, otherwise something like rook d8 or even bishop c3, right? The threat from his opponent. For example, Magnus plays bishop e2, that would be a huge blunder, because bishop c3 takes, takes, and then the rook just falls. Uh, and it's completely winning for his open. So Magnus is almost forced to play queen d2. His open will play side before, which is an accuracy by Stockfish. But as a, again, in my opinion, it's a very human move. Uh, he, his open had to go for g5 and then take c3 and then castle. So pretty much his opener right is a pawn down but as magnus's pawns are doubled and he has quite bad development uh the position is equal f6 and it's about 0 0.2 which is pretty much no advantage the knight can get to e5 attack this pawn and his opening would be quite fine his opening played knight before and then magnus made an inaccuracy back a3 the best move was rook d1 uh, the idea, because after a3, his opponent got g5 and rook d8, and it was equal, but the idea of rook d1 is uh, that after castles, Magnus get a3. And now that if his opponent plays rook a d8, that's a huge, huge blunder, because of a takes b. And now if rook d2, b takes a, Magnus is just, if we count the pieces, he has four pieces, his opponent three pieces, Magnus is just a piece up, that's a blunder. So his opponent had to return knight c6, but then Magnus gets like knight d5, queen trade, and now he actually has a pawn, an extra pawn, with pretty much, I would say, no compensation, right? He has an extra pawn, a very, very good knight, and yeah, he's much better. But he played a3, which was an inaccuracy. His opponent played g5, 
uh, root d8 immediately was possible, but why it's good to include g5 is that the bishop is at four square. Because, for example, you could have done the same thing, but now the problem is, is you cannot go g5 because then a takes b, and then now the as we played queen c1, right? Uh, the rook doesn't hang, and Magnus is just a piece up. So c5 first, now we cannot take the knight because queen a1, we just lose the rook. So Magnus played bishop h2, his opponent played rook d8, and queen c1. So again, yeah, Magnus has won a pawn, but in my opinion the position is quite, quite bad to play. It's very, very uncomfortable at least, because you are a pawn up, right? You have a pawn, but look at your opponent's pieces, right? You have an extra pawn, but your opponent pieces are very, very developed. And on the other hand, look at your pieces. Very, very passive. So, Magnus opponent, uh, Pantsel 11, played knight d3, which was a human move, but it was an inaccuracy. He had to go for knight bc6, bishop e2, then double up the pawns. Uh, queen c3, queen c3, and then something similar like in the previous variation. Uh, Magnus is a pawn up, but a very, very good compensation for his opponent, so he doesn't really feel like it's better, and actually his opponent can be even slightly better. But uh, Levon played knight d3, which was an inaccuracy, because now uh, he, his idea was to take the c4 pawn, but he let Magnus to finally finished his development because he was a pawn up right here right but all of his pieces were extremely extremely passive but after knight d3 bishop d3 was forced and then castle was pretty much forced uh, magnus gave the extra pawn back but he got a good position knight d5 stoppage doesn't really approve it it says it's an inaccuracy it says better move for rook d1 takes knight d1 uh, and say bishop moves bishop d6 the idea is that we prevent castling because this hangs right so we just take and we are winning uh but for example if i don't know and also this pawn hangs right uh so for example the best line surfaces is 96 93 but this rook b1 takes takes magnus would be better this pawn hangs and no castle for his opponent the king is in the center is quite slightly better so rook d1 was a better move but magnus played knight d5 and it was actually very very interesting and hard to uh evaluate the position as a human his opponent troop was the only move takes rook d5 rook e1 that's what was the idea so now the rook attacks the knight and the good thing is that the king cannot move because the knight is just going to fall so rook e1 a queen d8 was played by his opponent protecting the knight. Queen c4. Again, uh, because pretty much if Magnus would just wait and play queen c2, then after castles, right? His opponent castled and then he's just a healthy pawn up. Then gets like b6, knight c6, knight d4. Right? Let me, I think, restart errors are better. Uh, and then he would be better. So Magnus plays queen c4. And the idea is that after castle, I am offering you guys to pause the video and think what the best move is for white here. All right, everybody, I really hope you found the move. It was brilliant rookie seven. And the idea is if takes queen d5 and that's completely winning. And if, for example, b5, then you just go queen e2 and your piece up completely win as well. So queen c4 was a really nice move. He saw uh, Levan didn't castle because of rook e7. Of course, he played king f8. But now, as you can see, king is quite bad, right? Still stuck in the center. It's very unpleasant. Magnus plays knight e5. Okay, Stockfish again doesn't really like the move, but I like it. Stockfish suggests playing rook e2 with the idea if a6 you get rook a e1 and now you attack the knight right and then if for example knight c6 you get brilliant queen d5 and queen takes there is just rook to e8 and that's made so rook e2 was a nice idea stoffer says the best line for black was to sacrifice the pawn and then get like king g7 and it would be more or less equal but okay magnus played knight e5 and knight c6 was a mistake from his opponent he had to go for a5, but it doesn't really feel human, to be honest, guys. The idea of h5 is rook h6. 
and then you maybe perhaps want to double up the rook so go like king g8 so it's a very not human move knight c6 was a very human move uh but yeah h5 his uh, levant would even get slightly better position but he played knight c6 then rook ad1 you may say like oh magnus blundered a knight and the rook at the same time but he didn't because if you take the knight then the rook on d5 falls and magnus is completely winning and if uh, Levan takes the rook, then he just made him one. Um, so, yeah, Levan played knight d4 as the only move. Magnus played king h1. Nice move to step out, I think, out of any, any like, you know, checks just in case. Oops. Uh, any checks just in case. Uh, waiting move. And Levan made an inaccuracy b5, which was actually an inaccuracy slash mistake. He once again had to go for h5. Uh, and then b5 c4 and then levan is a pawn up but as the king is in castle it is still quite unclear the only move is bishop d4 rook d1 then the idea of h5 works rook h6 and then the position would be equal but again it's a very human move so levan played b5 magnus played queen d3 h5 knight c6 only move for white uh, for magnus which keeps the advantage then queen b6 only move for levant to at least because for example if some like queen a8 there is 97 and then there is some queen e3 and queen is very very passive on a8 okay so queen b6 because now for example the same line right rook d8 here there is already like bishop f6 or queen f6 it's fine for black but okay uh, in the game after queen b6 magnus played 97 rook d8 and now he played knight f5 and now levan blundered he had to go for bishop f6 but already now after bishop e5 magnus would be pretty much slightly better he gets like knight g3 and then this pawns and because of the king levan most likely is gonna blunder well not blunder but he will have to sacrifice as you can see some crazy lines though but he will sacrifice have to sacrifice this pawn he takes this pawn rook e3 but magnus king is much safer so uh, stockfish says magnus is slightly better even though he's a pawn down but bishop of six was the best move uh but levan played queen g6 reverse a blunder and now magnus found bishop c7 very nice move and then levan played rook d7 and once again guys i offer you to pause the video and find the absolutely brilliant solution which magnus found in this game and after that levan just resigned so yeah guys pause the video and think all right everybody i hope you found the brilliant rookie eight sacrifice in the rook and now it's levan just resigned because the only move for him was king e8 but then after queen e4 uh, I don't know, king f8, there is just queen a8, and then rook d8, queen d8 mate. And for example, if queen e4, knight e6, then there is queen a8, c, uh, queen a8 uh, knight d8, rook d8, doesn't matter, queen d8 takes, takes, and that would be mate. So Magnus found brilliant rook e8, and Levan resigned. Mm, okay, I was already lost after queen g6, bishop c7, because for example, if rook c8, Magnus gets bishop d6, king g8, knight e7, and that's a fork and he's completely winning king h7 he wins the queen it's game over stockfish suggests bishop f6 but takes takes queen e4 trading queens taking d4 and then rook e2 well rook e2 is a weird move but like anything wins the pawns once again are super weak magnus is up in exchanges plus six position totally winning so yeah rook d7 very nice okay after rook d7 if you said queen e4 it is also completely winning magnus just would win an exchange but it still would require some some uh, some safe play, you know. But Rook E just ended the game on the spot, and that's how yeah, Magnus played a very brilliant brilliant game in my opinion. The opening was quite nice. Sure, maybe he had to keep the space advantage, uh, because yeah, he got this one. Then his opponent, then Levan, made a mistake. Yeah, they both missed Rook D1. and then A3 Knight D5 Magnus would just be completely better. But okay, he played A3 g5 bishop h2 then it was unclear and then knight c was a big inaccuracy which gave magnus the advantage knight c6 had to be played and then slightly better end game for black even but okay then magnus finished the development then he went for dubious top versus knight d5 but i really liked it rook d1 would give him a slight advantage in an end game 
but ninety five very interesting way to spice things up. Then you just didn't let Levan castle, and then yeah, he went pretty aggressive. And then he got nice in betweener, just passing not in betweener, but passing the move to Levan. Then Levan played b five, which was inaccuracy, queen d three, and it was game over. It's a brilliant rookie. So yeah, everybody, I really hope you like the review. I think the game was brilliant. So with that game, Magnus advanced to the round three of the World Cup, where I think he's gonna play Ariantari. So yeah, it's very exciting, and I really hope you loved the recap of the game and yeah thanks a lot everybody for watching let me know which other games you would like you would like me to recap and yeah um uh, i hope you like the recap and i'll see you all next time take care everybody and bye bye